Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Libs pulverize man to a pulp outside Trump event, horrified when they learn who he is. The job of the anti-fascist is to make fascists too afraid to act publicly and to act as volunteer targets for their hate and attacks which might keep them from thinking about burning down the mosque in their neighborhood, or so says Mark Bray in his book titled, Antifa, The Anti-Fascist Handbook. Yet it seems the radically militant leftist group did not take their own advice, and instead accidentally beat the crap out of one of their own. A fellow Antifa protester apparently looked like a so-called neo-Nazi or an Antifa speak essentially anyone that leans right or disagrees with them in any way. Antifa is not, nor have they ever been accused of being particularly bright. It seems the criteria as for being defined as a so-called Nazi is becoming broader by the day, not unlike that of the empty space between the ears of those that profess to follow the hardline ideology very much in line with the brown shirts that played a significant role in the rise of the Third Reich. Antifa thugs were out in full force in an effort to protest others attempting to utilize their First Amendment rights to free speech at a rally in Boston. It seems a mere difference of opinion is no longer tolerated. One must be pummeled and bludgeoned into submission for daring to express an alternate point of view. It seems Boston had a grand total of zero neo-Nazis present, however, and one protester attacked a man simply because he looked like he could be a Nazi. One protester can be heard yelling, do not hit someone that you assume is a neo-Nazi. You cannot do that. He's on our side. That is right. You must be first sure that you ideologically agree and then you are free to punch that person. Forget civility, discussion, the free exchange of ideas, and the First Amendment altogether. Ideas? We don't need no stinking ideas. As Joseph Stalin states, ideas are far more powerful than guns. We don't let our people have guns. Why should we let them have ideas? When a reporter asked the man who was assaulted and now bleeding from his head and mouth if he planned on sticking around the fine folks at the rally, he replied rather ironically, I'm not exactly sure right now. Apparently, getting assaulted and bloodied by the very people whose ideologies you claim to embrace while you scream and yell and attempt to pummel so-called neo-Nazis is not enough to flee to the premise and do some serious self-reflection. However, it seems after several significant spates of violence incited by the masked crusaders of Antifa, Four Republican members of Congress are attempting to take matters into their own hands in an effort to address this behavior. A measure is being presented in the House that seek to punish anyone wearing a mask who injures, oppresses, threatens, intimidates a person in the free exercise of or the enjoyment of any right or privilege they would normally be entitled to under the laws of the land, along with a fine and up to a maximum of 15 years in prison. The bill is being introduced before the House Judiciary Committee by Rep. Dan Donovan, RNY and co-sponsored by Peter King, RNY, Ted Budd, RNC, and Paul Gazer, R. Oz. H.R. 6054, the Unmasking Antifa Act of 2018 State Stash. Whoever, whether or not acting under color of law, while in disguise, including while wearing a mask, injures, oppresses, threatens, or intimidates any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the Constitution or laws of the United States, or because of his having so exercised the same, shall be fined under this title, imprisoned not more than 15 years, or both. The bill also includes an additional two years of imprisonment for the crime of destroying buildings or property while wearing any sort of mask or disguise during the commission of the crime. There have been many documented accounts of violent assault by those claiming to be or claiming affiliation with Antifa. One of the more notable incidents was an assault on a supporter of President Donald Trump by a Bay Area professor from Diablo Valley College and self-professed anarchist known as Eric Clanton. 28-year-old Clanton was outed online, on the website 4chan, for using a bike lock to strike a man in the head. The assault was captured in a video clip that drew widespread attention and anger after it was posted on YouTube. He was then arrested and charged for four separate counts of assault with a deadly weapon. Yet another incident just happened in Portland, Oregon when a Vancouver-based, right-wing group known as Patriot Prayer, attempted to hold a rally in the name of freedom and courage. Members of Antifa showed up and attacked the conservative group. Four civilians and a police officer were injured when they were hit by projectiles hurled by the Antifa protesters, and had to be transported to the hospital, the Oregonian reported. The riot led to a viral video of a proud boy known as Rufio knocking out an Antifa member. It seems the new unmasking Antifa act has ruffled a few feathers among the alt-left. The law is effectively a modern take on anti-mask laws dating back to the mid-20th century in order to stop the violent activities of the Ku Klux Klan. 
and Tifa may now need to take some anger management and figure out some conflict resolution, rather than just beat on people they disagree with. Naturally, the so-called anti-fascists are losing their mind calling the bill dystopian and screaming about the risks of fascism. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.